So we're going to be looking at a review of glucose metabolism. And what is glucose metabolism? Well, glucose metabolism um, is how glucose is broken down um, into energy within our bodies. Um, and that's going to be undergoing glycolysis, the PDC, TCA, ETC, and we'll also see fermentation. All right, so the first step is obviously glucose. So glucose is a six carbon molecule right here. Um, so once it enters our body um, and enters inside our cells, the first thing that's going to happen is glycolysis. Okay, so glycolysis um, occurs in the cytoplasm, which is the, right below the, the plasma membrane. Um, and what glycolysis is, is it's going to produce pyruvate, NADH, and ATP. Okay, so pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. Um, so we broke down glucose, which is a six carbon molecule, into this three carbon molecule. Um, and we produce NADH and ATP. So our goal was producing these ATP and NADH, which is our energy source as well as our electron carrier. Okay, um, so once we have this pyruvate, okay, now we are in this fork in the road. So we have to decide, do we go under fermentation or PDC? Um, and so this all depends whether or not uh, there's an electron acceptor, a final electron acceptor. And for humans, that would be oxygen. So for this case, we're going to look um, whether or not there's oxygen or lack of oxygen. So lack of oxygen would undergo fermentation. And this is also known as anaerobic conditions. Okay, So in humans, um, this is going to convert pyruvate into lactic acid. And in bacteria or yeast, we're going to produce ethanol. So in humans, it's lactic acid fermentation. And in bacteria and yeast, it's alcoholic fermentation. Okay, so the sole goal of fermentation is to replenish NAD+. Remember, we use NAD+, to produce NADH in glycolysis. So without that NAD+, um, we wouldn't be able to undergo glycolysis, and we couldn't produce that ATP. Okay? So now, if we do have oxygen, what can we do? Well, we can undergo the PDC, which is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Okay? So it's aerobic, so when we have oxygen, and it also occurs in the mitochondria versus fermentation, which occurred in the cytoplasm. Okay? So the main goal is just to produce um, acetyl-CoA, which is breaking down this three-carbon molecule into this two-carbon molecule, which is acetyl-CoA. And so the ultimate goal of um, glucose metabolism is really to oxidize, fully oxidize glucose. And we see that slowly we're, we're breaking down this glucose in, from a 6-carbon to a 3-carbon and now finally to a 2-carbon. And our other goal is to produce NADH. All right? So now that we have uh, undergone the PDC and produced this acetyl-CoA, what do we do now? Now we can undergo the TCA cycle. All right, so the TCA cycle is the tricarboxylic acid cycle, um, otherwise known as the Krebs cycle. Um, and so why does it name this tricarboxylic acid cycle? Well, we know that citrate is the first step or the first um, intermediate in the TCA cycle. And we see above that molecule up there, it has three carboxylic acid derivatives attached off of these um, carbon molecules or carbon chain. Okay? Um, so that's where that name derived from and it occurs in the mitochondria and the goals are, are pretty much the same. So we want to break down acetyl-CoA um, into carbon dioxide, which means complete oxidation. Complete oxidation means we went from that 6-carbon glucose all the way down to CO2. And then we also want to produce ATP, which is our energy source, and NADH and FADH2, which is our electron carrier. Okay, so now that we've done this and we produce NADH, FADH2, and ATP, well, our ultimate goal is to produce that 32 ATP. Um, but we have NADH and we have FADH2, so what do we do with them? Well, we put them in the electron transport chain. And if you remember, the electron transfer chain is in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, and so the goals of this are to produce ATP. Um, and so for every NADH, we're going to produce 2.5 ATP. And for every FADH2, we're going to produce 1.5 ATP. So if we were to add up all the NADH, FADH2, and ATP, we would get that 32 ATP. Okay. Um, so if we looked at it, we would see how we got each of those. So in glycolysis, we got 2 ATP, nothing else. In PDC, we got 2 NADH and nothing else. In the TCA cycle, we got 2 ATP, 6 NADH, and 2 FADH2. Um, so total, we get 4 ATP, uh, 10 NADH, and 2 FADH2. And so we see that uh, for every 1 NADH, we get 2.5 ATP, and for every 1 FADH2, we get 1.5 ATP. And so that's how we got a total of 32 ATP. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.